Now, last Friday, I uh, saw the departure of Health and Human Services Secretary uh, Tom Price. And he had apparently spent a large amount of taxpayer money on private airfare, charter flights. Now, that right there is the swamp. <laughs> and uh, in a rare moment of praise for Trump, I actually uh, will point out that he was incredibly pissed uh, that Price had done this and that when he was found out, that he only offered to pay some of the money back. So, in fact, according to the New York Times, Trump told reporters that he was not happy. Quote, I can tell you I'm not happy. Mr. Price is a very, very good man, uh, but the secretary's offer to pay back the government for just part of the costs of the private flights would be unacceptable. He's got to pay them all back. He's got to pay them all back. All right. So, again, a little bit of rare credit for uh, Trump for getting pissed off and actually saying, you know what? This is unacceptable. You, you got to go. You made me look bad. And I, you know, I realize that that's what it's about. Of course, uh, it's all about the optics here. Uh, but at the same time, Tom Price is the guy that literally wanted to get rid of Medicare. So, <laughs> you know what? I'm not crying for his loss. Uh, but anyway, now following that departure, other cabinet members uh, who have also spent taxpayer money on airfare are starting to freak the fuck out. Uh, according to the Daily Beast, Trump cabinet members are in a mad dash to avoid the fate of ousted Secretary Tom Price, fearful that their own private travel could hasten their departure from the Trump administration. At various agencies, officials are attempting to put a positive spin on their boss's use of charter jets. In some cases, they're implicating officials within their own departments as a way to shield themselves from the president's wrath. Now, this is already an awesome story uh, and everything that we expect inside of the Trump administration. It's like, Oh, look, uh, you've got uh, these departments that are, you know, department heads that are spending money on all this extravagant travel. And then they're saying, oh, it's not me. I didn't plan this. No, no, it was that guy. Oh, oh what's that? Oh, that is the sound of the bus uh, and somebody getting thrown under it. <laughs> so, but, but look, uh, this was happening before Tom Price ste uh, stepped down. But it was actually, it, it's, it's now getting thrown into overdrive. Once it became clear that Price was on the outs, there was an immediate realization that, quote, if we ever got tied to Price, and this is according to a senior official at another federal agency, if we ever got tied to Price, we'd be crushed. Yes. Now, what other agencies? Well, there's the EPA, uh, where uh, Administrator Scott Pruitt has made some questionable purchases. Now, for one, he had taken out and chartered military flights for official business at a cost of $60,000. Now, they got a little bit worried, uh, the EPA did, so the press office began putting out a series of emails highlighting the significantly lower price tag of Pruitt's taxpayer-funded flights and the different nature of his official travel. They also emphasized that Pruitt had chartered a plane only after commercial flight delays would have prevented him from attending an official event. See, see, mine was cheaper, man. Mine was cheaper, and I and I had to. I didn't have to take that expensive charter flight. I mean, I, I, I had to because I didn't have a choice. See, so you can't blame me. Please don't fire me, Trump. Please don't fire me. That's what this is. But wait, it, it actually gets a lot better. Now, the EPA also quickly sought to shift focus away from Pruitt and started pointing to the lawyers that work beneath him. An agency official provided the Daily Beast with letters from its general counsel's office approving Pruitt's use of chartered and military aircraft ahead of time to show that he was not independently opting for such travel options. See, hey, look at that. It wasn't, it wasn't Scott Pruitt. Uh, no, no, no. It was those damn lawyers. Those lawyers were doing it. I mean, they were chartering these fancy jets. And Tom Price, he was totally going to say something. And Scott Pru was totally going to say something, right? But uh, he didn't want to, I mean, he didn't want to go against the lawyers. He was too busy doing the people's business. Nobody believes that. Nobody believes that. And besides, it's not just the flights. Pruitt has also been dogged by revelations over the size of his security detail. So way, way too much security. And we know um, uh, previously that Pruitt, is not somebody that uh, allows other people to make eye contact with him. He's like, no, no, leave me alone. I'm not interested in, in, in talking to you. I'm not interested in doing anything that has to, or, you know, with anything that has to do with you. Leave me alone. 
I'm not here for you. I'm not here to protect the environment. I'm here to talk to oil company executives and help the giant corporations. After all, Pruitt was a guy who used to sue the EPA for actually doing the job of the EPA, trying to protect the environment. Now, it's different that if the EPA fails to protect the environment, yeah, then you could sue. And you can go after them and you can say, hey, why didn't you protect the environment like you said you were going to? That's legitimate. Pruitt was not doing that. Pruitt was like, no, you're doing too good a job protecting the environment and putting too many uh, regulations on my corporate friends. I don't like that. I'm not a fan of that. So yeah, let's, cu let's cut that out. Okay, cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> now, the other thing that he got in trouble for was, other than the security detail, are reports that the agency spent $25,000 on a soundproof booth at EPA headquarters. A $25,000 phone booth. You've got to be fucking kidding me. Who needs a soundproof phone booth anyway? Apparently Scott Pruitt says he does. Oh, it's because I make calls to the president. That's right. A source with knowledge of the situation told the Daily Beast that prior to the installation of the EPA phone booth, Pruitt did not have a secure phone line with which to speak to the president. Well, that's funny because the last EPA head didn't actually need a secure phone line. Why do you? That's very interesting. Hmm. So, again, what makes Pruitt so special that he needs a special phone line? Maybe it's the investigation. Could be. I don't know what Scott Pruitt has to do with the investigation. Maybe he's worried he's going to be wiretapped. I don't know. Or maybe Pruitt's up to some other shady shit that he talks to the president about. I don't know. I don't know. Now, furthermore, on the phone booth, the vendor building device said it was a custom installation that cost way more than the standard model. But EPA staff quickly argued that it showed the importance of Pruitt's role in the administration and how, how, and how close the president is. In fact, their statement says Lisa Jackson's EPA was always on the defensive, even with the White House which explains why they didn't need a secure line with the president. This is EPA spokesman J uh, Jahan Wilcox said in a statement. He said, unlike the previous administration, President Trump and the administration and Administrator Pruitt are working closely to protect the environment. Protect the environment, my ass. This guy's he's not protecting the environment. He's wasting our money, taxpayer money on private jets private airfare to meet with the heads of oil companies. That's not protecting the environment. He does the bidding of the oil companies. Now, interestingly enough, Pruitt faces an investigation into his use of private jets. In fact, the Daily Beast writes at the request of Congressional Democrats last week, EPA's Inspector General opened an investigation into the adequacy of and adherence to policies and procedures regarding travel by an EPA administrator. So, <laughs> Here comes trouble, man. What did I tell you? The guy who promised to drain the swamp, Donald Trump, ended up putting swamp, the swamp in the White House. But why is anybody surprised when these people are found doing swampy things? They are swamp monsters. But there's more. Other agencies could soon find themselves in a similar position. And unlike the EPA, they're pointing the finger at the White House itself and not their own lawyers. One official at one agency currently under scrutiny for private travel noted that White House uh, Deputy Chief of Staff Joe Hagan had met with agency heads early in the Trump administration to discuss what types of travel would be appropriate. Hagan, the official noted, continues to sign off on military travel by federal agencies. Other Trump cabinet members have tried to publicly downplay and defend their travel habits. For example, Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke, in a remarks to the, at the Heritage Foundation, said reports about the more than $12,000 in taxpayer funds he had spent on chartered flights were, quote, a little BS. Just a little? Just a little bit of BS? Well, it turns out, just a little bit of BS is still fucking BS. Just saying, dude. Then, of course, you've got VA Administrator David Shokin, who had attempted to spin his disclosure of his own controversial private flights as a win for government transparency. That is awesome. <laughs> He says, uh, it took response to criticism over a 10-day European trip Shulkin and his wife took 
during which Navier had played for had uh, paid for flights, a day at the Wimbledon tennis tournament, and the uh, the Thames. I, I'm saying that wrong. Uh, the Thames River Cruise, followed by an evening at Piccadilly Circus. Trunkin stressed that he had conducted official business and announced that the VA would now be disclosing additional information about official travel practices. Hey, look, man, I was doing some shady stuff, but good thing we've got government transparency to find to, to, to catch me doing that shady shit. I'm serious. This is his, uh, this is a press release. Uh, under this administration, VA is committed to becoming the most transparent organization in government, and I'm pleased to take another step in that direction with this move. Veterans and taxpayers have a right to know about my official travel as secretary and posting this information online for all to see will do just that. Weak fucking sauce. You got caught, son. You got caught, and now you're like, government transparency. God, I love government transparency. You get no credit, sir. Actually, to be honest, it, you're kind of rubbing it in our face that all your trips had actually benefited you at our expense. And look, yes, you're wasting our money and you're admitting it. But here's someone who isn't. Steve Mnuchin. Now, Mnuchin... Um, there's, uh, I guess, some uh, investigation into whether or not he uh, might have taken his wife out for their honeymoon on taxpayer money. That, of course, the travel would have been paid for and not the actual honeymoon. But still, I don't want to pay for your fucking travel. That's bullshit. Now, the Treasury acknowledged that a request had been lodged for such travel. But the agency withdrew its request after a secure communications option was identified during the Secretary's extended travel. The Treasury's Inspector General opened an investigation in department-wide travel practices in the wake of the controversy, but Mnuchin insists that he did nothing wrong. Quote, I've never asked the government to pay for my personal travel. I'm very sensitive to the use of government funds. I'm sure you are, dude. I'm super sure you are. <laughs> Look, this is what happens when you put the swamp in the White House. And, and look, and it's not only like Trump's not smart enough to find this out. No, he knows. He, he's in there too. He is part of the swamp. I mean, the only reason that he was mad is because, oh shit, dude, you're making me look bad. Like, you're going to shine attention onto my own grift. Like, stop. Stop. <laughs> That's over the top. And look, people use taxpayer money, turns out, to, to enrich themselves. I know. A big shocker, right? That's actually why you need rules and watchdogs to make sure that people follow those rules if not you're going to end up getting this massive corruption in the government just like this but please republicans continue to deregulate government and get rid of all the watchdogs i'm sure that'll work out just fine hey everybody thanks for watching this video if you want to see more like this please hit the subscribe button below and if you want to support truly independent progressive media please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.